the Navy Cross is a great honor. I will not deny that. The biggest honor to me is my men fought 50 years to get me that. You stop and think, they fought 50 years for that. Around September 4th or 5th, 1965, I was watching a news program on uh, NBC News with Chet, Chet Huntley and David Brinkley, and I saw a uh, segment on Vietnam. And it wasn't a very good segment. And I said, well, and I said to my mother, I guess those boys need my help. Well, in April 1966, we were shipped to Vietnam. I was sent off to Charlie 13, and I rotated out. And I went back to the States. I was assigned to Marine Barracks, Charleston, South Carolina, as a security guard. And I stayed that for a year. Two or three months later, I don't know the time, but I got a QSN to go back to Vietnam. And when I went back, I told myself, I'm not gonna worry about it. I said, I'll go and check in and tell them, I just left Vietnam a year ago, I'm on second tour. And I said, they'll give me a job in the rear. Well, they assigned me to uh, First Marine Division. Next thing I know, I got orders to kill a company. And I don't wanna tell you what I said. <laughs> but I know what that meant, so I got, went to Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines. Uh, I was platoon sergeant at that time. It was a very, one of those very, very hot days. We had very heavy packs. We were going through rice paddy. It was not totally dry, but it wasn't the worst rice paddy you could be in. Uh, we started going through it, and I bet you we had, we had to go about 300 meters maybe. About halfway through, the word came down to drop our packs. They were too heavy. We dropped our packs and proceeded to maneuver and just about, I would say, 50 meters in front of the tree line, they opened up. We had walked into an L-shaped ambush. They were dug in, in bunkers. We were not, we were in an open rice paddy. I only remember one dike. I'm sure there may have been more than that, but I only remember, remember one. So it wasn't, to me, a lot of places that you could hide. And everybody was trying to get behind that dike. <laughs> you know? The fire was incredible. There was a lull, and the skipper called me back to the CP because my platoon commander was down. So I was running the platoon. So I go back there with my radio man. And I wasn't thrilled about that because we had to cross 200 meters of rice paddy to get back to it. We were probably 25 meters, 50 meters away from where the skipper was at, and my radio man took one in the feeding larder. I grabbed him, we were right, we were right there at the dike, I grabbed him by the flat jacket, threw him over the dike as best I could because his radio sticks up. And I'm fumbling for the radio, because I want the radio. But I got back to where the skipper was, and he was telling us kind of where he wanted us to maneuver and everything. And then the automatic weapons opened up. It just opened up like crazy. Uh, it took the gunny uh, in the shoulder and he fell on me. So I'm bandaged in the shoulder. It took the skipper uh, that I remember in the leg, hip, and shoulder. He's trying to talk on the radio, but, 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 he's, but, 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 he, but he started to stutter. You know, and, and, you know, it's losing it. It was starting to stutter. So I just took the phone away from him. I tell him to secure the net, and I'm the only one talking. And then I come up on battalion and tell the battalion, I said, this is three assists. I am assuming Kilo 6. Well, up until that time, battalion just thought we were a little minor firefight. And they were kind of slow to react. But when I called in, that three assistants swimming kilo six. It got things moving, but not quick enough. We tried to consolidate our position as best we could. There was people all over the place on this front. We tried to get as many as we could back into a safety circle, which again, we lost people doing that because the fire didn't stop. Uh, I cannot say enough about the corpsmen. They had their hands full. Uh, they all used their all battle dressings. They all used 
everybody else's battle dressings. And that means they had to scurry from person to person. Where I didn't want to move, they moved. And then they all got wounded. Some of them got wounded twice and didn't stop. Around eight or nine o'clock at night, the relief column got through to us. There was 33 of us left at a kilo company. We had 68 wounded, sent him hit numerous times, many of them critical because they'd been out there for a long time. We had 22 killed. We were ambushed by an NVA battalion. An NVA battalion at that time ran 500, 700 people. We were 113 strong. <clears throat> they were dug into a fortified position. We were outgunned and outmanned. Kilo Company Marines fought gallantry. You cannot believe how, how great they fought. The general consensus is if they hadn't given 110%, nobody would have survived. Uh, and that cannot be forgotten. <clears throat> Many of those people gave their lives so people could live. I do not want that to be left off and not forgotten about those Marines, especially those 22 died. Uh, they did doing their job. Third platoon took people from all over the United States and somehow we meshed together and not only became an effective fighting force, but became friends. And that's different. They say you're closer to the guy in the fighting hole than you are to your own brother. Well, I'm close to my brother. Don't get me my brothers, but I'm very close to these guys too.